Hello, this is DJ Dogbone from ModSnap Radio, and I'm here with Scott from Crystal Method, and he's here at the Paper Tiger tonight celebrating and touring, and he's got a brand new album out, and we're here to talk to him a little bit about the history of Crystal Method, and, uh, and you know, I'm really interested in hearing about that title. Uh, the Trip Home? Yes. Uh, um, yeah, it was, um, it was at the end of a long... Uh, weekend out, you know, I've been doing a lot of DJ sets around the country, uh, around the world, basically, and um, and I, you know, I got home one afternoon uh, from a weekend of shows, and I was talking to my wife, and I was just saying something about, you know, the trip home. I said something about the trip home, you know, and I said, wow, and I just, you know, just like I did with the, you know, with the, the band name, the Crystal Method, and a couple other titles, you know, you just hear something go by, and you go, wait a second, that sounded really cool. And I started thinking about it, and um, and I just thought, yeah, it just it's it sounds exactly what I um, you know I want the album to sound like. I wanted mm -hmm. to sound, um, I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to to be, you know, a, 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 a evoke emotion, a little bit of the nostalgia, you know, it, you know, you, the trip home, any sort of journey back to where you came from, back to what you're, you know, what you're all about. Um, I think is uh, is a great uh, a starting spot for uh, you know a band's uh, album, especially mine that goes um, forward after you know a partner you know of somebody retiring. You know my partner Ken retired uh, from the uh, the world of music and is happily living in, uh, with his beautiful wife down in Costa Rica. Um, and it's almost like they uh, like they robbed a bank or and they went down and they're, just, they're, 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 they're like the end of the trading places or something. Nice. Like that. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're they're on an island or in a jungle somewhere with a beautiful coast and beautiful water and um, and they're happy and I um, and I take great uh, pride in uh, in being in you know in a band uh, with uh, Ken for so many years and everything we've done together and I take great joy in the fact that he's now happy and you know and moving on in his life and uh, and so I'm uh, I'm you know I'm uh, I'm. I, I, this is what I, I love to do. This I, I'm, I'm, I'm. This is everything about uh, my dreams when being a kid were, you know, make music, go out and play music for people, be, you know, uh, accountable, be excitable, be combustible. You know, let's get out, let's get out there and and have some fun with it. Well, you know, I was listening to the new album and I noticed that. Well, I've always noticed that Crystal Method is one of these bands that you can always tell who it is. Um, you guys are almost like auteurs in that you have like a like a flavor that seems to always be there. There's always like an underlying tone, um, and, and even though this that carries, and you, you you said it, this kind of there's kind of coming back to that sound a little bit, but there's a lot of like cool contemporary undertones, and it's a very 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 unique album. And you've got some collaborations going on in there. Yeah. Um, there was one in particular that I was listening to earlier. Uh, you've got a couple with uh, Teflon Sega. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, uh, he's amazing. Um, you know, he's kind of the the almost the, the the one of the lead characters, if you will. There's this, you know, there's this um, distance that uh, he's 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 kind of lost a little bit. You know, he has this um, early on in the album. You know, he um, you're gonna hear him a little bit in a um, in a track that. Uh, that's it's called uh, Chapter One, which oh, yeah. is a, a beautiful. Um, it's going to be expanded on in the next album. It's kind of short too. Yeah, I, I wanted it to be longer. Yeah, I yeah, know, and it's going to be. Yeah, it's get, that's sort of the that's sort of the trailerized version of the track. So the, I, I'm I'm always, you know, I, I from the beginning of our career, sitting in a little uh, studio, um, you know, in two car garage, and um, you know, locker sent to the bomb shelter. I always. I always reflect back to being a kid and being very, um, you know, visual with 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 its sounds. I, I love, you know, I love the sound design and you know and, and you know and and all that that goes into you know Star Wars films, John Williams scores and all that stuff. And and I, I always hear sound, sounds antagonizing each other in a, in a very cinematic way. And so I wanted to make a, a cinematic album. I wanted it to feel like it was a score to. You know, uh, to a movie you wanted to see, or or, or to you know a, a life lived, and or a, you know, in our case, it's sort of the the score to the first twenty years of the band. You know, you go through the the raises, this you know guttural sort of you know uh, 
angry, but you know, purposeful, um, you know, kind of that drive to get yourself through, uh, get yourself noticed. Holy Arp is that, for me, the sort of the first song that really came together for the album that started to really make me feel like I was going to be able to, you know, move, because that's a really, you know, and that, you know, it still sounds crystal method-y, mm -hmm. you know, and then again, it's, uh, you said it really well, that sort of there's some flavor, if you will, that's in the band's sound, and, and I wanted to, obviously I wanted to continue that flavor, but I wanted to expand on it, and uh, and I wanted it to, to again, find another chapter in the history because each each album is different. Vegas is mm -hmm. different from Tweekend, Tweekend is different from Legion of Boom, you know, from going forward, Divided by Nights, different from all of them. So, you know, um, I feel that it's sort of a great combination of all those things kind of baked together in a way that uh, that feels organic and, and, and it feels like one, sounds like a continuation of story. There's a thread line that goes through it. So you have, you know, Frankie's really great, um, you have well, Amy Kirkpatrick's really beautiful, haunting, sort of coming back kind of vibe uh, on, on, on Ghost in the City. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, um, it's sort of, does she, you know, sort of floats through this world where she's, you know, discovering she's no longer, you know, alive. And then, you know, there's all those different emotions. There's that anger part of it. And then there's like the elation and then there's like the confusion. And then it gets, and she starts to evaporate into the ethos. And then this girl, you know, the thousand hornets in the belly of a you know and a, and a spaceship sort of sound that comes through and the turbulence the track turbulence mm -hmm. um, and then you you get to the basically the end of uh, what I call the end of side one the vinyl will have four sides uh, of course two vinyl two pieces of um, vinyl for um, to sort of help really get the album to sound well but back in the day when we used to listen to music it used to be vinyl it used to have two sides right. you know the end of side in my mind the end of side one, one. Is uh, is the uh, carry on track, which then leads to um, you know next track, which is um, the drive inside, which is really kind of like that, you know, that it has that little haunting sort of um, you know daisy hazy sort of sound at the beginning of it. It starts to it almost reminds me of like that you know the moment when you're looking at the mountain you're about to climb, or the you know the empty page that's in front of you, or the day that's in front of you, where you you know. You know, it's going to be a, you know, it's going to take you some energy to get through it, but you, you find a way through it, and then, you know, halfway through it has that big lift, and it's like, rock that, and then it comes in, very crystal method and then it has that big lift at the, the back end, and then it settles down nicely into chapter one, uh, which then, you know, there's all that elation, and everything's great, and then cabin pressure comes in, and there's just a little bit of um, disturbance in the force, if you will, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, and then, you know, you get into Frankie Perez's uh, beautiful vocal, which uh, has been reborn um, in uh, There's a Difference, um, which again, it gets that angst that kind of... Well, that, that was your second single. Wasn't that the second single that was re released? I think you did... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. was released in September? Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, the whole, you know, getting the album out there and, it, you know, it's different than it was, you know, 20 years ago, let alone five years ago. So, um, but yeah, the, the records... Um, you know the record's out. It's you know it's been really well received. The best, most critically acclaimed record we ever, ever um, uh, put out. And I don't know if um, uh, I don't really care for that as much as care for people that like yourself to know the history of the band and know that we're you know that have been fans or have have understood where we're coming from to hear something in that you like is uh, is a great uh, joy for me. Well, I was I was you know been a fan since the very beginning. I started out to Jane uh, back in the early nineties. Nice and. Um, and I remember when I got Vegas, and it was like nothing I'd ever heard. Um, and then uh, Tweaked came out, and mm. all of a sudden you're collaborating with with people, mm. big names. Like how was how was that for you coming out of you know the bomb shelter? Um, I mean, y'all recorded that where? Did you record that at home? Was that uh, we set up Tom Rillo's uh, amp in the um, in the uh, kitchen at, of the old bomb shelter, basically a two bedroom house in La Crescenta, really. Uh, you know, kind of, you know, non, um, you know, uh, I mean, just, you know, kind of one of those houses that were like you know, put together in the 50s when everybody's mm -hmm. coming home from the war. We need, we need places for people to, you know, not a big house, uh, really small, not well designed, shag carpet that seemed like it had been there for a hundred years. Um, but, uh, but it was the only place that Ken and I could afford back, back, back in the 90, uh, Two when we moved in there, and uh, 
uh, 92, 93 when we moved in there. So, um, And I remember seeing, if I'm not mistaken, I remember seeing Crystal Method, at least a track or two, on like a moonshine compilation even before Vegas came out. Oh, yeah, out. yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because uh, the, the City of Angels guys were basically uh, in a broom closet at Moonshine, uh, at, their, at their offices in uh, Santa Monica. So, you know, they 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 signed us to this uh, to this, you know, small, you know, 12 inch deal and then that helped them get light them they yeah there was a trip hop test mm -hmm. uh part one part two and i think there was a trip hop test part three and there's american dream a bunch of uh, uh, compilations and uh, then we did a couple of remixes back in the day kyoki remix mm -hmm. and, yeah um yeah a couple others and then um and then we were um i mean fast forward that was a quick two years um in then from ninety four to the first twelve inch came out in ninety four and by the end of uh um i think ninety six we were assigned to uh um to or the yeah beginning of ninety seven uh we were assigned to outpost which was uh you know the great uh label that was getting started that had like um a lot of a couple the d j spooky was on the label i think uh, also like um uh, Brian, uh, I'm sorry, Ryan Adams' first band, Whiskey Town, was also on that album, uh, on, that, on that label. So, um, yeah, we we um, did a lot of compilations, and then you know when we went out and we toured for you know pretty relentlessly for uh, you know 15 years, I guess, uh, doing nothing but live shows. Well, 10 years of doing nothing but live shows, and then we did a uh, maybe uh, I think we did our first community service record which is like in 2003 or 4 or something like that and then that's, that's the it. that's a continuous mix album yeah 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 and you put out a second one which I thought had some really unique uh, clever uh, well unique selections and I'm wondering if those selections are why you ended up working with Peter Hook later because that second uh, yeah we did a, we did a remix or a new order remix on that yeah I, I had just been a fan with of, uh, new orders and and you know of course Peter Hook um, um, for you know, forever, you know, going back to you know, I mean, even um, the um, the closer album from um, Joy Division, Joy Division, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but um, um, I, uh, yeah, we we reached out to him, and um, you know, that was a great deal of fun. We that was on a track um, called I just played that track last night called uh, Blunts and Robots from um, from from Divided by Night. Yeah, yeah, he was great. He came into the studio and. Was had stories and uh, um, was just a good good bloke to have on the album. <laughs> <laughs> That's something else. Yeah, really, really cool. And I understand. Uh, speaking of labels, you, I understand you started your own label. Is that is that correct? Well, it's it's, a, it's just a small imprint that we we haven't put anything else on it. It was um, yeah, Tiny E, which was basically, you know, at the time we were trying to come up with a title for or a name for a label, and we just couldn't think of anything. But, but one of the one of the Great joys of our life, uh, um, being um, fans of uh, of funny. Uh, we we there was a Saturday Night Live skit uh, that had um, um, uh, um, what's the name from um, uh, oh shit uh, um, he was a, he was a go, he was ghost he was he was the um, he was this what's that character Marvel character with the, his head is the rides a bike and his uh, Ghost Rider Ghost Rider oh yes yeah, Ghost Rider huh? yeah so the actor which was who was the actor that, the, that was uh, Nicholas Cage Nicholas Cage so Nicholas Cage was on Saturday Night Live and Nicholas Cage had always he loved uh, Elvis and he did like a Elvis impersonation uh, but it was uh, uh, the character was called Tiny E and basically <laughs> it was like a little. Uh, he was like he was like a little tiny E, like a little tiny <laughs> Elvis, and he was like a little. And he's like, I'm just saying that's a big tomato. That's all. <laughs> he's like, well, you get that salt shaker over here. I need some salt. <laughs> he goes, and it was just like this silly, ridiculous, and he's like, you know, and tiny, tiny Elvis, and it was just, and they're like, you got a tiny E. They just kept calling him tiny E, tiny E, and and uh, we, we, you know, it was like we kind of at some point. Uh, it was probably some weed smoked or something like that, and uh, um, um, it was like, oh, "What if we? It's a tiny, it's a tiny electronic album. Why don't we just call it Tiny E?" Uh, so um, yeah, so um, but it's it's just mainly to 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 you know because the last the first two records were signed to um, the Universal um, um, Geffen World, um, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then uh, we went our separate ways, um, and then we just were uh, basically. 
we've always self-produced. So there was like the idea that most of the time you need a, you know, a label to go in and help you produce the record. You know, they're paying all the funds. And so we've always just produced our own records, gone into the studio on our own. We've had our own studio one way or another for all this time. So we, we um, but on this record, which was different from all those other records is I wanted to go, I wanted to go into a real studio and I wanted to send them, I wanted to, I wanted to, to send it through like a Neve board. You know, I went, so I went into um, Sound City, mm -hmm. um, the sort of the famous uh, you know uh, studio where Nirvana's Nevermind was made and all those documentaries that was made, and they just got a, a neat board in to replace the one that Dave Grohl bought, and um, and I was just like, uh, I just wanted to, I just knew that the record would really um, get in there and you know it really fluff up a bit. I wanted it to, I wanted it to sound um, organic. I wanted it to be punchy and loud, but not. EDM loud. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I wanted. Yeah. I wanted you to be able to listen to the record. Uh, you know. You know. Driving your car. Or, you know. Doing work in. You know. In your own selective. Um, you know. Communities. Uh, you know. I want. I don't. I didn't want it to dominate your your existence. You know. So much music now is like. It wants all your attention and energy and intention. You know, mm -hmm. all the time. So I just. I. I purposely wanted to make a record that was more laid back. Just sounded great and just um, you know was nostalgic, but also being timeless. Well, I was looking at some of the comments uh, on uh, some of the e-sites that are selling your album digitally, and across the board, people are li listening to it cover to cover, yeah, all the way through. Because you said uh, it's like a cinematic journey uh, soundtrack. Chris Method has not only contributed songs to soundtracks, but haven't you also done entire soundtracks, like for like the movie London? We did, we did, yeah, we did a we did a score um, uh, a few years back for London, and then we did a TV series that was a J.J. Abrams TV series called um, Almost Human, mm -hmm. which was uh, a lot of fun as well. But the different, uh, the whole different mindset when you go in to make you know make an album for the Crystal Method, or you go and make a you know do score to picture. I just did a um, which is about to drop here in a couple of weeks, uh, actually about a week. I, uh, um, Guillermo del Toro uh, animated series on Netflix called um, Three Below, which is a which is part of the uh, um, a series of, sh of um, so, so, troll, troll hunters. So troll hunters, yeah, yes, troll hunters, yeah. So sort of sure. it's in that world, um, right? Yeah, because I know he couldn't continue that world because of what happened with um, yeah. uh, Anton Yelton. Yeah, yeah, really, uh -huh. yeah, really, really sad. Um, um, yeah, that was really, really bad. Um, really very sad. But um, yeah, so Three Below is uh, is is in that our city of Arcadia, mm -hmm. uh, and so the opening um, the theme basically is um, is um, and I got uh, is my you know some of my music, and I've got the chance to meet uh, Guillermo, and and he was you know was such a fucking cool dude, <laughs> such a, like, such a, so so kind and generous and. Uh, and uh, he, you know, he was—you could tell that he's a fan, and um, and um, and again, just like another one of these, you know, the further you go, the longer you, you know, continue to to, to work at it, the the more the, the universe seems to, you know, um, at least for for me, fortunately, um, um, you know, kind of continue to give me the kind of um, you know excitement and and thrill and enthusiasm that it takes to to you know to grind it out and get out there and just you know. Be away from home for a little bit too long sometimes, but um, or be in a studio for too many nights in a row because you know you want to get something done. Right now, I'm doing a, a Jean Michel Jarre remix, um, which is going to be coming out, I guess, sometime soon as well. So, and I did a Billy Idol remix, I did a uh, for Rebel Yell, uh, which has been fun. So, I, I mean, I, I you know, the page keeps turning and it becomes it, the, you know, the, it keeps getting more and more interesting as I continue to turn the page. I noticed that he's been. Kind of, uh, he's got a radio show on a digital radio station. He was playing a remix the other day. I guess he's got a remix album that came out a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. With 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 uh, where he did a bunch of collaborations. Uh -huh. so, it was yeah. super good. I was like, yeah. what is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. He's so great. you're doing one of those? I am going to do one of those with mm -hmm. him. But I just did a his new his latest release was a, a sort of a, um, Equinox, one of his big records back in the '70s. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of a, it's like the uh, the next sort of a reworking of not reworking but um, but sort of the um, the sequel to it you know, uh -huh. um, um, but um, but yeah so I, I had a great conversation with him uh, a couple months ago in um, in Hollywood just we, we met and the album just that I mean that interview just came out it was with Forbes magazine but um, 
Yeah, um, yeah. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just um, still grinding away at it. That's yeah, super it, cool. Yeah. So let me ask you this: How was the creative process putting this album together versus all the others? I mean, are you are you when you work with when you have a like when you I'm looking at the list of all the folks that you've worked with in the past. Um, uh, well, actually, uh, just on this album, when when you have these featured artists, are you cre writing and creating everything and then asking them to come in? Are you working with them on uh, the track? Them, How does that work? One, each one of them is different. I mean, I um, you know, like on Holy Art, I mean, I I mean, I had a bunch of songs going already for um, for the album, and then a, a really good friend of mine, now now one of my great friends. Um, um, Glenn uh, Nichols, who is a really talented producer and his uh, moniker Future Funk Squad has been around for the past 10, 15 years in the break scene and out of the UK and uh, and uh, you know he came over and you know and um, you know with Ken you know I, I did a lot of the music um, um, and he kind of more has been more the engineer and producer kind of but we both collaborated we both you know we both wrote we both you know we chose everything what we were going to work on together collectively but um with glenn you know it was just so easy to get along with him he's like a, just a good another good bloke you know he comes over and we just you know we get in the studio i've got a bunch of toys from the from the, all the years of, of of being uh the crystal method lunch of synths and uh things that we you know that i now own because ken's retired so uh, and I, you know, bought them out of the studio. So I'm, um, yeah, I've got all this great gear, and I've got a bunch of fun, um, enthusiastic, um, really, really intelligent, kind, um, easy to work with uh, friends. Uh, not only Glenn, but uh, Tobias is a he runs a studio in my um, in my studio, and we've done some collaborations on some scoring um, things together. And he's um, and he's um, <clears throat> on um, the drive inside and uh, um, chapter one. You know, he wrote some strings for. Um, um, moment of truth, and um, and then uh, we collaborated together on Let's Go Home. Of course, uh, La Castlevania, who's the you mm -hmm. know good, great uh, um, young producer who um, worked on the John Wick movies. Um, you know, he was the one that you know all that great club music when John Wick's kicking ass. Sure. <laughs> uh, excuse me, but um, yeah, you know the the process is different. You know, like you just um, you know sometimes somebody will come over and. You play you something a vocal or, or you know uh, you know synth melody or something like that. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, send me the stems, and you know things will kind of evolve from that. Or I'll send something over to Glenn. I've got a bunch of pieces here, you know, that I've been working on, and because he sends me something back, it's like, oh, that's cool. Let's bring yeah, let's get the stems over, and we'll fucking work on it together. So, um, or it's just like, hey, I've got this track. It's just about you know, uh, you know, you know, just a few moves away from being something. You know, let's um, you know. I like the I like the idea of uh, you know bouncing things off of somebody, you know that was a great you know obviously a great relationship having with um, you know Ken all those years is that you know you both have like minded goals you know what you like you know what you don't like and you just get in there and sometimes you help you know that other person is the one that's make you, helping you decide yeah you don't need to go any further in that direction you know but, you know this this is good you know you know just kind of pulling you back from um, from going off in the you know. Um, on a tangent that doesn't uh, make any sense. So, um, but I mean, the new record that I'm working on right now, the trip out, which will, um, which will be sort of the um, sort of the companion piece to this one, will have a lot of, um, hopefully, a lot of the same artists uh, on it, and um, um, yeah, we'll do something that's going to be um, hopefully just as special. Is that uh, something you hope to have out uh, by like middle uh, next, by this year? Time next year? Yeah. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah. All right. And then, uh, and then a live tour to follow. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, how do you balance being an artist that's always on the road? You mentioned before we got started, you have family. How do you find that balance? Uh, you just, um, you know, you, um, you. Uh, what I do is, I, you know, I obviously, I, I, you know, I, I'm a good boy when I'm on the road. <laughs> <laughs> that's helpful. Uh, um, I don't, uh, you know, I'm not looking for anything. I, I, uh, you know, I love, you know, I've been happily married for all these years. We have two beautiful children. I, I you know, I'm, uh, um, you know, a responsible father, husband, um, um, and, uh, and I, um, you know, I just, I, you know, I try to make, I make the most of the time I have with him, you know, mm -hmm. when I get home. We've been reading, uh, Harry Potter books, uh, for the past, uh, three or four years, and so we're on, like, six through Harry Potter, like, the, 
the fifth or sixth Harry Potter uh, right now. And um, how how old is your son right now? My son's twelve. My daughter's mm-hmm. ten. Okay. So and then you know I took my son. My son came out with me. Was at the show with me last night. And then the, at the was with the we went to the Cowboys game on Thursday. So he just uh, I this this earlier this afternoon I got him off on a plane going home to um, you know to L A and. Then I went over, got on my plane, going, came here. So, um, um, but yeah, it's, you just try to, you know, I just really just try to ha- have as much fun um, with them and spend as much time with them as I can, and, and you know, and um, and then take them with me whenever I can. They they've gone to a lot of different events and you know different parts of the world where you know I was in Hawaii this past summer and you know had it you know so they were with me out there and. Um, it's just um, next uh, coming at the end of uh, this year. Um, I think we're going to go up to um, um, beginning of next year. We're going to take a train up to um, from Seattle to to Vancouver. Oh, nice! Yeah, so just do some, just you know, again, just try to include them as much as possible, mm-hmm. as, as much as it makes sense, sure. and um, and uh, you know, get home safely. So. Uh, Advice to anybody who wants to start trying to do what you do, and I don't mean like copy you, but wants to get into the music. Making music. Yeah, especially yeah. with the way the industry has changed so much. Like um, maybe the way you got started is not the, the way that they would go. Like what would well, you, what you tell them? What thing, you see I, now? I think the I think that you have to be um, authentic and you have to have a sound. I mean, I think that there's which in in today's world. Authentic, uh, uh, authenticity is, is is sometimes harder, just because there's so many different things that go into you know. Again, now it's likes and and you know and, and these things that you do that um, you know are really about popular opinion. You know, mm-hmm. finding a bunch as many people as they can that follow you and all that things. But you really got to get a sound. You got to find a sound. You got to you know, understand what it is that you want to do and um, and and how to be different from everybody else. But um, and, and but it be authentic and and um, and hopefully when you do get up on stage, whenever that opportunity does come, you you know you get up there with enthusiasm and, and have fun with it. Awesome, Scott. Thank you for your time. Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate I, I it. I appreciate it. You've been watching Mudsnap Radio. Be sure to check out Scott's new album that came out recently uh, called The Trip Home. It's Crystal Method. Keep tuning in to Mudsnap Radio. Thanks. Cheers. Awesome. Thank you so much. Very cool. Very cool. Stay away. I want to see.